Hi, I'm going to be starting a tutorial series on the Paper ZD plugin made by Critical Failure Studio. Uh, it's a very powerful plugin that enables Unreal to actually have some use case with 2D projects. The native Paper 2D, which is built into Unreal, if you don't already know, uh, lacks a lot of support and uh, development and can become quite complex and difficult to debug. This gives us the ability to have actual animation graphs, um, lets you see the, have it notify editor and have a animation editor, as well as state machines, which in 3D, if you have never worked with them, they are how you would normally animate. It lets you just go between animations back and forth very smoothly without having to have a spaghetti mess of blueprints or just code in general. Um, this was actually developed as a, from what I know, as a kind of, it's what Critical Feather Studio uses for their own game and they've given all of us free access to it. So they've gotten a mega grant for it, which is quite cool and very good of them. All you gotta do is add it to your library. Once you're in, the Epic Games. If you don't ever see anything in here, even with refreshing, I found that once uh, Fab was introduced, you need to come in here and select all. It might have just been me. It was very irritating to figure out what was going on. Um, make sure you just scroll down, install it to engine, use whatever engine you're using, and then open it up. Uh, in another video, I'll probably actually, yeah, I'll go over creating a world and um, tile maps, that's what these are referred to as. But for now, I'm just going to be focusing on the Paper ZD plugin. All right, so I have a character called the Cultist that I will be working with. I will link the a free sprite sheet. It's called the Adventurer. If we look in here, um, he looks a bit like this. Just a little guy, it's all free and it's quite nice. Has a ton of different sprite sheets, so it's quite powerful. All right, big cultist. Typically, you're gonna have an idol. If you don't already know, we're going to want to select all of these. If yours don't already look like this, if they look like an entire sprite sheet, I'll just pull up a sprite sheet real quick. If it looks like this, you have to do a little bit different of stuff. So this is a sprite sheet. We're gonna still do what I was about to say, which is applying paper 2D settings. Um, you would actually have to take your sprite sheet, sprite actions, extract sprites, and kind of mess with it here. The auto does a pretty good job. Sometimes it'll catch things a little weird. Um, it's a bit difficult. Hopefully whatever sprite you're using has already automatically done it in a way that has the individual sprites and everything all nice and formatted. If it doesn't, it'll take a little bit more work just coming in here and extracting the whole thing, changing it to a grid, changing the grid size and getting them all out. However, thankfully mine is so very nice. So we're gonna select them all. We need to make sure to apply paper to 2D settings before creating sprites. If you do not do that and you just hop in to immediately create a sprite, it'll look a bit like this. Who knows, maybe that works with your art style, but that doesn't exactly look right. So let's delete him. Select them all, apply paper 2D settings. Select them again, create sprites. Now we have the actual sprite class. Select all of those, create flipbook. And now we have a flipbook. Um, you can edit how fast a flipbook goes through, um, changing the FPS and then the actual frame runtime. I put it to 60. I don't even know where I learned how to do this anymore, but it's just become kind of a habit. You can make this, you could leave it at 15, you could make it 12, you could make it 20, you could make it whatever. That gets a bit deeper into 
animation theory and such. But as you can see now, I've set just a basic eight. He's moving a bit slow, so I would probably lower the frame run to make it move faster. But I will leave this for now as a demonstration. Cool, we've got our idle. Then you would want to go through and do that to each of these, whatever attacking and running and everything. So you'll just, it's pretty quick. You get, it, it's just the same thing over and over it, but you would have to come in. Big cultist attack, go through each of these. There's 20 different frames. <laughs> so this one's a bit, a bit bigger. And with this, I would actually make some of these frames faster and some longer just to make an attack feel better. Um, but that all takes a bit of time. This is one of the biggest flip books I've seen with 20 frames. Um, so yeah, for now, we're gonna just focus on using the idle. If we go back into whatever folder, we're gonna open the blueprint class. If we search in paper, we have the original paper 2D options, a paper character, and a paper ZD character. We're gonna select the paper ZD character. I'll just name him Big Cultist uh, BP. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> there we go. And um, open it up. Immediately, I'm just gonna change the perspective to right. There is no point in really having the normal perspective as it's 2D, so we just need two dimensions. Over here on the left in components, we have a sprite and an animation component. In a regular, oh, by the way, I am using control spacebar. That opens up the content browser quickly from wherever you're at. Um, if we were to have just come in here and grabbed a paper character, we see here that there is no animation component. The animation component is native to the paper ZD plugin. So we're going to want to make sure we have selected a paper ZD character. You can add it on, but there's a few things. Um, from what I remember, there are a few things you need to make sure and change, but I would just recommend automatically paper ZD character. If you select Sprite, over here on the right, we have Source Flipbook. Idle. And we're going to scale up the Sprite, not down the, comp the capsule component. If you scale down a capsule component, it can start to mess with um, tile maps and just general things. So it's better to just leave your capsule component as a just basic one for continuity. Uh, Okay, four point, if I remember right, I think this 4.5 gets this to a good spot. Oh, that's right. Always trips me out. You can line it up all pretty and nice, but this will do for now. All right, so control space brings up the content browser again. I'm going to delete this. And now we're going to right click. We're not actually going to search up blueprint class. We're just going to use the paper ZD uh, quick slot. There is the paper 2D one. This will be useful for tile sets and tile maps. Once again, I said I, I'll make another video on those. Um, paper ZD, animation sequence, animation source, and anim BP. We're going to start with an animation source. I'm going to call it Big Cultus Anim Source. Anim is just short for animation. And now we need Paper ZD Care. Yeah. Oh, Paper ZD, the animation blueprint. Once you select one, it prompts you with the picking of a parent animation source. So that's what we just made. So I want to do the select the Big Cultus Anim Source for my own and rename it to. Big Cultist Anim BP. Yeah, I have a whole revision control system, so it, it likes to take its time sometimes. Oh my goodness, I am misclicking. <laughs> Gotta fight the allegations now. All right. I just can't spell. We'll just completely ignore that. All right, cool. 
this is the anim BP, the animation BP, and the animation source. Uh, in my next video, we will begin to use the animation blueprint, which is how we start to use state machines. Um, for now, I'm just going to show the animation source. In here, once you have made your flipbooks, you have the ability to add new animation sequences. I'm going to name it big cultist. Oh, wait, it doesn't need spaces like that. That's right. It does need spaces. Uh, idle. And we just hop over here on the animation data. This is another flip book, so we'll just have to find the corresponding flip book. And there we go. We, you need to do this for every single flip book. Um, this gives us the ability to work with what are referred to as notifies, um, which can play different sounds. Uh, you can use it to start to create attacks and damage and um, paper armor and such. But this works for now. It just needs to be added in here to be called later within the actual animation blueprint. So that's all for now. I would recommend you go through and do this for every single flipbook and whatever characters. Make sure you create individual um, animation blueprints and sources and characters, right? Characters have the sprites, flipbook, animation component. That's right, last thing. Forgot that. Paper, you need to go in within your actual character BP, animation component, anim instance class needs to be set to with to whatever uh, you've just created for that blueprint. Otherwise, the animations will not actually change within the character. That's all for now. And I hope that begins to help you with making sense of this plugin. It's incredibly useful. And I will see you in the next video.